Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how sound waves can be transmitted from one medium to another. You should then be able to describe how the frequency range of human hearing is limited. And finally, you should be able to describe how frequency and amplitude affect sound. And all of this is for triple physics students only. In a previous video we saw that sound is a longitudinal wave. When sound waves move through the air, the air particles vibrate from side to side like this. Now these vibrations can pass from one medium to another, for example from air to a solid, and a good example of this is a microphone. We'll be looking at microphones in more detail in a later video, but one of the key parts of a microphone is a paper cone. When sound waves hit the cone, this causes it to vibrate like this. The microphone then converts this to electrical signals. Another good example is a human ear. Sound waves in the air are funneled into the ear where they hit the eardrum, and the eardrum is a thin membrane. The sound waves cause the eardrum and other parts of the inner ear to vibrate, and this causes the sensation of sound. So as we said, sound waves in the air can trigger vibrations in solids. However, this only works over a limited range of frequencies. Partly because of that, normal human hearing has a frequency range of 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. Frequencies outside of that may not be able to cause the eardrum to vibrate. There is one other idea linked to this that you need to understand. I'm showing you here the wave equation which we've already seen before. Now when waves move from one medium to another their speed can change. For example sound waves travel much faster in solids than in gases. That's because the particles in solids are much closer together. This means that vibrations can pass more easily between them. Remember that the wave speed is the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. So when the wave speed changes as waves pass from one medium to another, the wavelength also changes. For example, if the wave speed increases, then so does the wavelength. Now, I should point out that the frequency does not change when a wave changes medium. That's because waves would have to be destroyed or created at the boundary, and that's not possible. Okay, we're going to look now at how frequency and amplitude affect sound. We can view the features of sound waves by connecting a microphone to a cathode ray oscilloscope like this one. You may have used one of these in your school. Now, there is a problem with this. A cathode ray oscilloscope represents sound waves as if they were transverse waves. But you need to remember that this is not correct. Sound waves are longitudinal. Okay, this represents two different sound waves. The top wave has a high frequency, and high frequency sound has a high pitch. The bottom wave has a low frequency, and low frequency sound has a low pitch. Okay, again, this represents two sound waves but this time they've got different amplitudes. The top wave has a small amplitude, so that means that this is a quiet sound, whereas the bottom wave has a large amplitude, and that means that this is a loud sound. Okay, there are a couple more facts about sound that you need to know. Firstly, sound waves can only move through a medium, for example, air or a solid, and that's because sound waves move by particles vibrating. Sound waves cannot pass through a vacuum as there are no particles. Secondly, just like light, sound waves can be reflected. We call a reflected sound wave an echo. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on sound waves in my Vision Workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.